Yo guys, Limit here, and I'm back with a topic I've wanted to cover for the longest time. I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard me say that, but it'd be like that sometimes. Though this topic, I needed some help getting my point across, so I asked the wonderful Keyblade Sarah to do just that. She is just as passionate about this as I am, so what better person, right? I am almost positive everyone has an opinion on this, and while that may be the case, remember to keep things nice and civil in the comment section below like you guys always do. Never feel like you can't comment just because you have a different opinion. By all means, that really is why we're doing this video, to understand what goes through the minds of those who agree and disagree. Another reason why is because I believe this is a more serious topic that needs to be talked about in an effort to possibly correct it. I won't waste any more time though, let's go ahead and get into it. So to start this all off, I guess you could say this really started about a year or so after Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced to the world. People back then used to complain that the KH fandom never received any trailers, or to put it better, the fandom didn't receive as many trailers as they wanted. We would get one here and there, and every single time a trailer came out, we were all happy and excited for the game. We all had amazing discussions about what we saw in the trailers and how it linked to what we thought was going to happen in the series. And to be honest, that still holds true to this very day to a degree. But Around 2017 is when things seemed to be changing and not exactly for the better. After the D23 Toy Story trailer, in which we got the first release date of the game, Square ended up pumping a lot more trailers than we have gotten in recent years, and of course I view this as a good thing. But as the months flew by, it would get extremely toxic in our community, with people complaining and saying the rudest things to Square about how they're showing too much and will spoil the entirety of Kingdom Hearts 3 at the rate they're going. But before I go any further than that, let me ask you a very quick question. In what universe, era, timeline, has Square Enix ever outright spoiled a Kingdom Hearts game in its trailer? Now see, I hear you typing, and God, I wish I had a counter for how many times I've said this, but limit, and here we go. I'll have you know that they showed Ansem in a Kingdom Hearts 1 trailer, and they also showed the 0.2 final boss in its final trailer. Oh, and you remember Dream Job Distance? They showed some in-game stuff for that. And to that, I just have to say, I can't really agree with saying those are spoilers, at all. Why? Because with Kingdom Hearts 1 for the prime example, but can really be said with every single game, but again, this is the main example, this is for Kingdom Hearts 1, it was an extremely new game, an entirely new game. You had no knowledge of the game or its characters or the universe itself, so you can't realistically tell me them showing things like Ansem was a spoiler. Leaving Kingdom Hearts 1 and looking at any of the other games, say Birth by Sleep, where the final fight was shown in the opening of the game, no one considered that to be spoilers back then due to the fact that we had no context. Context is the key word we should really be focusing on. Our amazing friend Super Butterbuns made a video recently talking about the same subject, and she put it in the most perfect way and goes as follows. I want y'all to say this with me because the quicker you come to terms with this, the better. Kingdom Hearts is unpredictable. Always has been, always will be. And because of that, anything we see in the trailers is not the full picture. Even with all the story teasers we've been getting with stuff like this and this and this, we have a whole game's worth of story we still do not know. The only thing we do know is that the people we thought were going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3 are shocker in Kingdom Hearts 3. <sighs> what a smart person she is. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the fact that Nomura himself was surprised that the fans reacted so deeply to Aqua being shown as a Nort instead of the Frozen aspect of the trailer goes to show that it was nothing more than an attention grabber. I think this is just surface level content. Of course it appears to be an important scene in battle, but they are not giving us any context clues. Would it be cool to have witnessed that in a blind playthrough of the game? Absolutely. But if even Nomura doesn't see it as a big deal, it probably isn't compared to what else is going to go down in Kingdom Hearts 3. And as Kingdom Hearts fans, we should expect and understand that. Think of just how complex the plot of the Kingdom Hearts series is, and it should help put your mind at ease. When you watch movie trailers, they tend to show parts of intense battles in order to grab your attention, but they don't show the context so as not to spoil the most intense parts. The newest Winnie the Pooh trailer definitely showed some more attention grabbing possibly major scenes, but they were brief and again with no context. I truly believe these trailers are meant to just hype up the fans and get them ready for what is to come. It's really looking at these things in retrospect that you get an understanding of it because trust me, back when 0.2 was about to come out during that two week time gap between the Japanese and English releases, I didn't want to see a single thing about the game at all, but the difference here being that I had watched all the trailers the game had to offer before its release, but never once complained about what was shown because, once again, I had no way of connecting one dot to the other. I still went into the game as blind as I could and enjoyed it greatly. The entire game was really shown in these trailers more or less, and no one was none the wiser. 
Going back to my point though, no other game has ever had this problem with its trailers to the point where people openly complain and bash Square as much as they do today. Yet suddenly, people automatically assume that Square is showing too much with their trailers for Kingdom Hearts 3 and are trying to attack them accordingly. I assume the reason why people hadn't done it with the more recent games in the series and are only doing it with Kingdom Hearts 3 is due to the fact that since they have been waiting such a long time for it, any and everything that comes out for the game, you want to try and avoid. But going back to an earlier point, these same people were the ones who also complained in Bash Square for not uploading trailers, so this is very much a kind of contradiction, no? At what point did you go from abusing Square for not giving you enough information and saying they owe you, then when we get closer to the game's release, you're abusing them for showing, in your eyes, too much? I don't understand. Something else that we'd like to mention is that Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be the biggest Kingdom Hearts game to date, with the highest of expectations, and you really just cannot blame a company for wanting to promote their own game. The best but not most practical solution would be to stay off the internet if the trailers really bother you that much, but to be honest, you probably don't want to do that, especially when these trailers are being made with the intent to get people interested and not with the intent to spoil. Trailers are inevitable for every game. Kingdom Hearts 3 has definitely produced a lot of trailers as of recent, but that's because they are building the hype for the game for both old and new fans. It is understandable for people not to want to see some of the trailers because they feel it may ruin their experience with the game. However, it is unfair to expect people to not post about these things considering they are released by Square themselves. These are not leaks, and even if they do happen to be showing too much, which is honestly just up to you to judge, there is nothing that can be done to stop it. You can mute hashtags on Twitter, and you can even mute people on Twitter. Or if you rather, you can go as far as unfollowing those who post Kingdom Hearts related content but you probably don't want to do that, and that's just the unfortunate reality. I think a lot of us were kids during the time of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, so we didn't really see much of the marketing behind those games. We went into the games with little to no knowledge, other than maybe a commercial on the Disney Channel, so seeing all of these promotional trailers can be very overwhelming. At the end of the day though, you can't tell a company how to promote their game. Square has been making games for decades, and I think that by now, they know exactly how to market their games. Case in point, basically to really sum it all up and to once again reiterate, the word spoiler is very dependent on the person, so what may be spoilers to you may not be to us and vice versa. But no matter under any circumstances, is it okay to attack a company that is trying their best to please as many fans as possible? Is that how we show appreciation? Of course it isn't. So the main thing really just comes down to being respectful. If you want to watch the trailers, by all means do so, I know we plan to do it. And if you don't after all this, then leaving the internet is definitely the number one option I would give to you, yet being realistic here isn't really what you want to do. You can't please everyone, but there are certainly answers to whatever problem you may have when it comes to this sort of thing. That's all we really want to say, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching. We will be doing a follow-up video on my channel about how the fans of Kingdom Hearts 3 have been reacting to Square and why a lot of us are just upset with the negativity that has been directed for these trailers. We've seen the developers firsthand share their passion for the game at the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere, and we would love to give you more insight into why we should trust Square and the future of Kingdom Hearts. Again, just like Sarah said, we have another video up on her channel, and if you wish to view it, just click the link in the description below, and boom, you're there. Once again, we want to thank you guys so much for watching. By all means, if you have an opinion on the subject, don't be afraid to leave your thoughts down below so we can all interact with each other. It's been Limit and Sarah, and we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.